Norman the Rock by Orvin Solberg. Illustrations by Kenny Solberg. Dedicated to my son, Kenny Dan. After 25 years, you brought Norman to life. And to my grandson, Joshua Dan. I'll get to read it to you on my lap. It was summer in Montana, and the sky was brilliant blue. The flowers looked just beautiful, all sprinkled with the dew. The sun was shining brightly on that warm summer day. The grass was growing greener, and the frogs began to play. The bunnies started hopping, and the birds began to chirp. The eagles started flying, and the frogs began to burp. One woodpecker started pecking, and an owl gave a hoot. Mr. Piggy started digging, started digging with his snoot. All nature seemed quite happy on that lovely summer day, except one lonely fellow who was wishing he could play. It was Norman, yes, old Norman. He was lonely as could be. He was lying on his belly, underneath an old oak tree. Old Norman was a rock, you see, and rocks don't have much fun. It's sad, but rocks can't sing or fly or even learn to run. A rock just lies there quietly. Life seems to pass them by. I think if Norman did have eyes, he'd break right down and cry. You see, life is kind of boring when you lie around all day, because Norman couldn't laugh or cry. He could only sit and pray. Dear Lord, he said, I want two legs so I can run and play. If I had legs, I'd take a hike and run around all day. I'd like some eyes so I could see the beauty all around, to see the leaves turn brilliant red, then flutter to the ground. Dear Lord, I know I ask a lot, but I'd sure like a nose, to sense the freshness in the air and smell a pretty rose. And with two ears, I know I'd hear the music all around. I'd listen closely with my ears to each and every sound. Yes, Norman prayed this prayer each day, and then he'd go to sleep. Cause sleep is what a rock does best, just sleep and sleep and sleep. Well, nothing seemed to happen to old Norman right away. He just lay there on his belly all through the month of May. But then suddenly it happened on the 12th day of June. Norman started growing legs. It happened right at noon. By two o'clock his eyes had grown, by three his nose had two. His nose was wide and beautiful, his eyes were sparkling blue. At four o'clock his mouth appeared, at five he had one ear. At six o'clock he had them both, and now our friend can hear. I want to tell you this my friend, old Norman was a beauty. With short rock legs and those two eyes he really was a cutie. Well, Norman stood there quietly, he really was in shock. It happened oh so quickly and it happened to a rock. Then Norman started dancing, which was a funny sight. Those two short legs were booking as he danced from left to right. His tummy started jiggling, just like a bowl of jelly. Yes, it wiggled and it jiggled. Norman had a jelly belly. Then old Norman stopped his dancing and he looked up with his eyes. There, running down the road, he saw another big surprise. A horse was running Norman's way. This horse was very bold. He wore a hat and trousers too, all made of solid gold. Norman stood there looking. This gold was oh so bright. This gold was very pretty and it sparkled in the light. Now Norman hadn't spoke before, but when he saw gold trousers, his mouth dropped open instantly and what he said was, wowzers. A rock that talks, that's really neat, the horse said right away. Why don't you come on over here and you and I can play? Now Norman was afraid at first and also very shy. This horse was big and very tall, so Norman just said, Hi. Well, hi yourself, the horse, he said. Now what's it going to be? You going to keep on standing there or come and play with me? I'll play with you, old Norman said, but tell me, what's your name? I'd love to play all day with you, and I'm sure glad you came. I'll tell you my name, he said, I'll tell you in a jiffy. My mother named me Oswald, but my friends call me Biffy. Well, Norman said, I'll be your friend and I'll call you Biffy too. My name is Norman, I'm a rock. I'll gladly play with you. Those two guys sure had a ball. They had a lot of fun. Yes, they ran a lot of races, but Biffy always won. But Norman didn't mind at all. At least he now could run. No, it didn't bother Norman if Biffy always won. Because when it came to hide and seek, old Norman was the best. He hid where Biffy never looked, like in a robin's nest. Yes, a rock is good at hiding like right beside the brook. Yes, Norman could find hiding spots where Biffy wouldn't look. Then it started getting dark, and Norman couldn't see. Old Norman started getting scared and said, this just can't be. 
Norman got real sad right then, and he began to cry. He thought his eyes quit working, and he didn't know just why. Biffy had been looking for old Norman all around. When he heard the crying noise, he headed for that sound. What's the matter, little buddy? Biffy said as he ran. Don't worry, little buddy. I'll help you if I can. Oh, Biffy, Norman said with tears running down his face. My eyes have stopped working. It's such a tragic case. I thought your eyes were made to see so you could take a peek. Oh, Biffy, say it isn't so, because my eyes only leak. Biffy was a real nice horse, and he was very smart, and he loved that little Norman with all of his heart. So then Biffy said to Norman, close your little eyes, because your good buddy Biffy has a super great surprise. Biffy pulled a flashlight out from underneath his cap. He turned it on real brightly, and he dropped it in his lap. Then Biffy said to Norman, go ahead and take a peek because you will find your eyes still work, so let's play hide and seek. So Norman did start opening his tiny little eyes, and when he did, he found for sure there was a big surprise, because when he opened up his eyes, everything was bright. Now Norman saw clearly with the beam from Biffy's light. So then Biffy said to Norman, see your eyes work all right. What happened is it just got dark. That happens every night. And so those two old buddies played the rest of the night. They kept playing hide and seek with the help from Biffy's light. In the morning, they got thirsty, so they went to the lake, but just before they took a drink, they saw an ugly snake. Now Biffy started getting scared and wanted them to run, because Biffy knew about the snake and that she wasn't fun. That's vulgar Velma, Biffy said, and brother, is she bad? Last August, when I saw her, she was really, really mad. See, old Velma gets real vulgar, and she likes to start a fight. She yells at everybody, and she really loves to bite. So Biffy said to Norman, I think we'd better run, because lots of guys have fought her, but Velma's always won. But then Norman said to Biffy, I came to get a drink, and Velma doesn't look that mean, at least that's what I think. So Velma opened up her mouth and said with a hiss, If you want to take a drink here, first pay me with a kiss. Don't do it, hollered Biffy. I just know this is a trick. You better start a running, and you better start real quick. But Norman didn't listen. He just walked up to that snake. I'll give you a kiss, he said as he stepped into the lake. So Norman got real close to her and then he closed his eyes. But Norman didn't get a kiss. He got a big surprise because vulgar Velma bit him. But then vulgar got a shock. See, Velma didn't know that Norman was hard as a rock. So vulgar Velma broke her teeth and I mean every one. Every tooth she had was broken. Her biting days were done. Well, now Velma got embarrassed, and man, her face looked sad. Without those chompers in her mouth, a snake just ain't that bad. I want to tell you this, my friend. Now Velma is a boar. Without those teeth, old Velma isn't vulgar anymore. Velma didn't hang around. She quickly swam away. And when she did, old Biffy yelled, This is a super day. The bunnies started clapping, and the birds began to sing. The frog said, he's our hero, let's make Norman our new king. Then Biffy came a-running and he stopped at Norman's side. Hey little buddy, Biffy said, climb on and have a ride. So those two, they rode away with Norman way up high. Biffy said to Norman, you're sure a special guy. And Norman smiled happily, beneath the sky so blue. Well Biffy, I just want to say you're pretty okay too. Background for what inspired Norman the Rock. I was speaking at the Writers' Award Ceremony in Saco, Montana, when I said to the young writers, it isn't the story you tell, but how you tell the story. I asked them to think of one of the most boring things imaginable, and they came up with a rock. A rock is pretty boring, but I want to show you that a rock doesn't have to be boring because you are the writer and you have the freedom to tell the story any way you wish. Okay, Solberg.